Hello everyone, Dr. David Sturtouch here, and I wanted to go over something I found about the new price changes. Uh, this is a really great video, and uh, let's see, uh, what is his name? Something psycho. <laughs> uh, it's actually, psycho. Uh, it's Buzz Cut Psycho, yeah. And he did a really great video, so uh, I'll link to that in the description so you can watch it as well. Um, but I, what I wanted to go over was some of these price changes because I noticed something that he or others seem to have not noticed. So what is this? There are new prices coming to the in-game ships. They're raising the prices. And um, I think there's also a correlation between they're trying to make the value you pledge and the ships to be more aligned. For example, if you're spending $750 for a pledge for an A2 uh, before uh, this patch, the 323 patch, you're crazy. <laughs> because you can buy it in-game for $4,500,000 or something like that. And we'll see those exact numbers later. But they are raising the price because now the A2 is being put towards its component value, its... Uh, the function of the ship anything with military components are going to be more expensive and then they're trying to also change some of the prices they've talked about that. this in isc like for the pisces c8r which is a really good versatile ship it's fast it's fun they want to encourage medical gameplay and things that they're wanting to encourage then they can drop in-game prices and kind of fluctuate the economy that way the other thing is i really think this is needed because it is too easy to earn every ship in the game, and then when you do get them, you don't really care as much. And one thing they're trying to really create the same value of is the ship that you love. You earned it, you get it. Now, people are going to say, well, this is just another cash grab, and you're half right. It's also a psychology thing, because, which is why I'm talking about this. I recommend get the cheapest starter ship you can. Get the $40, $45, whatever the the package is um, available and I do recommend the holiday packages uh, more than anything else so then you can melt what you have if you want to throw another if you love the game that much and you want to put another $40 or $45 into the game which we do with microtransactions or buying new games anyway so if you're getting a lot of playtime and a holiday package comes out get the holiday package as 20,000 AUEC and then upgrade on Invictus or IAE, whenever the 120 month things are, to the ship that you might want to upgrade to and you get 120 month insurance if you care about that. Because most starter ships cost come with six months insurance. And then on, I always say, for your game package, just f try all the ships. Start the cheapest ship absolutely possible. And then if you want to upgrade, do it for the one ship that you love no matter what because while this process is going and they're doing wipes and whatnot you, you're going to keep that ship now supposedly star citizen 1.0 will be out in a few years <laughs> maybe sooner um commercial release and i'm sure they'll still sell ships so it's just what ship they just won't have the wipes anymore so the incentive to buy ships with the wipes goes away but as they're this is part of why they're raising prices too. And that is to create a realistic uh, psychology expectation, expectation management. These ships are going to be a lot more than they are in game right now. Right now they're making them in based economy that you could buy them. Now that they're adjusting the economy, they're wanting to increase the game loops and the stuff you do with friends or the how you're going to earn money and the adventures that you take to be based more off the ship and the goal that you want. And I think that's really important to acknowledge here. So we're going to go through and um, I'm going to specifically kind of spoiler here, pointing out the one thing which I think everyone is missing and that is armor. And it's big reveal in how they're doing this that Maelstrom is pretty close. So let's go through this real quick. Uh, I'm doing this between a work day. So, um, Hopefully, everyone will be able to see this just fine. And let's see. Uh, here is the one I probably want to use. <clears throat> so I may back, bounce and forth, bounce back and forth here. 
All right, so uh, let's start with just going down the list here. And again, I do recommend watching this video. He's got some really uh, great thoughts and opinions. I just want to kind of point out the things that I was noticing. And um, this is leaked information from Reddit. He take He's taking it and just commenting in very similar. I just liked his format and some of the things he said and how he did it, so I'm using that myself. All right, so there's three Avenger series, and the Titan is still one of my primary recommendations if you want to upgrade from your 40 to 45 dollars ship i think it's a fantastic all-arounder that lets you do almost everything uh because it's got the cargo it's got really decent firepower basically uh size three or four we'll see how those shake out i uh, might make even more firepower and it's got two she uh one shields or two shields now i forget but um, <laughs> cargo, it can take an Atlas drive, which is the basic size one. And you can learn to, you can bounties and dogfight in it. And it's great. Then you've got the different versions of that. Now the stalker is the one with the EMP and they made that one. It doesn't have a lot of, um, major, U sorry, that's wrong. Stalker is the PVP one. That's the carbonite. That's your, uh, Mandalorian where you can put people into the the bounty things and there's not a lot of bounty gameplay right now so that's the the next step up from the very basic all-arounder the renegade is just um a, basically a skin uh version of one of these I think it's the titan it has a different loadout but you're paying for the skin the warlock is the emp one now this is going up a lot because interdiction gameplay with emps is going to be in Xeno Threat and some other things. They're going to want, if you're going to use an EMP, that's a lot of technology. That should cost more money. Um, so they're trying to add that level of complexity. Now, the Eclipse doesn't have a price change because it's already really priced high. It's $300 real money, uh, where these Titans are, uh, or the Avengers are anywhere from 60 I think it's 60 for an Avenger. I could be wrong. It could be 65. Actually, I think it's 65. And then the Warlock is 85. So I think it goes up to 65, 75, 85. But the Eclipse is $300. And that's a really expensive ship for just three torpedoes. It's a very specific one. And it's $3 million. That's not changing. This is going to be behind a reputation paywall eventually, which is also what they're introducing in these events is paywalls and that's kind of where the military variant of the c17a will be they're not going to give it to just anybody you have to have the rep of overdrive and then you can earn the ingram upgrade for what you may have already purchased which is the if you got the the regular one uh now this is where we really are starting to get into this where i've noticed the thing uh ignoring the gladius for a minute because that was just too cheap so they're raising the rates okay fine uh, it's a $90 ship, and if you just like the PvP, it's great. It's gold standard. Um, Hammerhead uh, is going to be, they've talked about this, they don't, you Gladius or Arrow should not be able to take out a Hammerhead. It should, Hammerhead should be able to defend themselves incredibly well. They should be dangerous to get close to as in fighters. And so it's going to be $40 million instead of 12.45, whatever. Now, the other reason for this is auto gimbals. So you've got four size four rhinos and these auto gimbals will be able to easily target things quickly. And um, they're not gonna miss that much. And you're moving a lot slower in these new master modes. So pilot skill is actually going to be a thing with strategy, but you also have to factor in now the hammerheads will, it'll be harder to get through the shields and they have armor. Maelstrom is coming. So armor, the intention is gonna be with ballistics that shields slow down the bullets, but they don't stop them. The bullets can still penetrate through the shield, but it is like an energy barrier that's gonna absorb some of the kinetic energy and then it'll bounce off the armor where the armor can take so many ballistic hits. Then the ballistics will be able to punch through. So you'll still have to take down the shields. Uh, the lasers will be able to take down shields and distortions um, and whatnot. They're adding that level of gameplay to hit power systems for if you want to just disable or if you want to destroy components. Ballistics will be able to punch through and actually damage components. Lasers will not. So 
armor is going to be a thing and adding ships that have armor means it will be able to stay in a fight with ballistics more so you can't just go after hammerhead ballistics and say sure i can get through all the shields um that is going to be a big thing because fine you might be able to get through some of the shield but that armor is going to protect all the components it stays in the fight uh it, shields may slow it down and mitigate but um the armor is going to deflect it so ships that don't have armor and you can see where i'm going with this uh possibly uh but before we get there i know <laughs> the reclaimer makes you money so they raised it 10 million or 13 million um then when you earn that you can make more money and you feel really good yeah i did it you know then we've got the retaliator which is adding modularity so this is probably four million it's gonna be hard to guess um i'm gonna guess the retaliator this is the torpedo version and the base might be cheaper and then you get the modules and it will still be about that but modules aren't here yet they're coming supposedly that will be with the cargo refactor i think more uh the saber is a medium fighter and interdiction um well it's supposed to be space superiority and it is it got nerfed pretty hard uh, in my opinion i think until the, we'll see what the maelstrom thing does now and how master modes affects it but it was a space superiority fighter so its specs might now actually be competitive again before it was I bought this Sabre that was the best ship in the game, and now it's pretty much useless compared to everything else. And because uh, the hit points on everything else seem to have more, and the Sabre just was like paper compared to a Cuddy. And yet the Sabre, in theory, should be able to maneuver it and all the other stuff, but the Sabre just be ripped apart. Now, the Harbinger, <laughs> the Vanguard series, is the key, is a very key thing here. So the Harbinger, the Hoplite, the Sentinel, and the Warden. So the Vanguard series are bulldog heavy fighters. They're one of my favorite heavy fighters. They're really expensive now. In game, um, they were 2 million, 3 million, 2 million, 3.3. Okay. In real life money, they charge for the Hoplite 240 for the warden which is the prime so the hoplite is a drop ship it's got six seats in the back there's no beds it's just of the bulldog it's got the oh and you can change the guns out equally on them because like four bespoke meaning they're in the nose you can't gimbal them and so they're fixed then it's got a a big gun on the front and the wings and the tails kind of stick out, but you can lose your wings, you can lose your tails, and you keep all your firepower right in the front. Now, the missiles, I think you might lose on the sides. I don't know if where they put those, but you keep all your main firepower, uh, gun firepower, in the nose and the uh, well, in the nose. So even if they shoot off the big gun or you crash that, you still have your four, four size twos that are bespoke in there. And you can have almost the entire ship shot to pieces but you will still make it back because it has a ton of armor and it's a size two quantum drive size two parts like size two shields size two power plants size two coolers it is a heavy fighter that can take a beating and the sentinel is the e-warfare version so the hacking which they've kind of shown a little bit on the recent event uh which will also be able to do some trickery. They say, uh, what was the, it's like the mischief, the, um, the weasel or something like that. Somebody described it. You're going to weasel in, sneak in there and do mischief. And so you'd have one Sentinel with a fighter group to mess with the satellites, the, the radar pings or ghosting, things like that. Who knows? That's just in the marketing. The hoplite is drop ship. So go in there, drop your six people off while you're doing, and then you can add some pretty heavy air support. The Warden is the air support uh, one. Heavy armor has an escape pod in it. Uh, that's one of the modules. doesn't work right now because escape pods don't work. And it's supposed to have more armor and initially was given a what well, is a bu uh, ballistic, I'm sorry, a cannon lasers loadout. Each one of these has their own lasers. So the Sentinel, or own loadout, is distortion focused. The Hoplite uh oh gosh i forget this one i think it's just uh repeaters laser repeaters and uh the harbinger is ballistic cannons um so they focus more on the you know the hit really hard 
And then it also has three size five torpedoes. So it's got a lot of missiles, the Harbinger. And it is supposed to be slower. It needs protected by wardens and the other people. Um, but I think it'll, and the key thing is the Harbinger also has two size three in the turrets. And the changes they're making to man turrets make it very dangerous, just like with a hammerhead. So I think when the man turret is going to be more expensive because those auto gimbals and it makes them much more defensible. These just became one of the scariest. Even if you lose a lot of maneuverability, you rotate the ship, you kind of spin it. The, the fight, whoever's ever in the front of those bespoke guns are in trouble, but those turret gunners, everyone else has size two. Warden, Sentinel, Hoplite, but the Harbinger's got size threes. But it's supposed to be less maneuverable and slower. Not my experience, but that may change in master modes. And Warden might eventually become the superiority. But you can see the price difference here. The e-warfare, more complex, more niche kind of gameplay, which he might be adding in soon. So it's still got Sentinel armor. And then it's got or uh, Vanguard armor. The Harbinger, bigger missiles. Two size fives hitting a hammerhead is like maybe a size nine. I fire two and or maybe fire three. That's like a size nine torp. And like you could, in theory, knock out a hammerhead if you hit it with every one. And so really close. Just finish off those front guns pretty quick. So, and that's right now. That may change now with the armor and everything else. Uh, but something to keep in mind. It's like, you're not, it's not an eclipse. It's not stealthy. All right. So we're going to move forward here on his video and he goes through these and kind of talks about them in his way. All right, so the anvil. Now we just did the Aegis. For some reason, there we go. Yeah, it's like the formatting changed just a little bit. Okay. That's why I'm doing this. <laughs> okay, so um, now we're on anvil. Ballista is going up in price. Now, also the arrow. Right, come on, guys. This is one of the best fighters in the game. It's super agile, and it being as cheap as it was was ridiculous. It is a $75 real money chip, a real money. Oh, I didn't finish the Vanguard prices. So Vanguard, just so you know what they are, is uh, the Harbinger is $290 now. They raised these prices. Hoplite $240, Sentinel $275, and Warden is $260. So price of a Scorpius is the harbinger a uh, little less than an or a little more than an ion is the warden and the hoplite is a little i did that wrong the hoplite is the price of a scorpius uh and the harbinger is a is 290 and so the warden is close as you can get to the uh the inferno the ion in the heavy fighter area this we're looking at 240 to 290 is what they're putting for heavy fighters so that's right now those may go up and as we're seeing in some of the prices uh that definitely could be the case here so uh we're still in ages oh yeah he did bookmarks that's that's why i like this one so the arrow yeah it's it's worth two million absolutely it's a great single fighter or fighter with a single shield uh super agile um, won't be able to take out a hammerhead anymore. Just bear that in mind. It's paper. It has shield. It does not have a lot of armor. This is going to change things, but it is a good pilot ship. Now, the ballista, the ground things, again, missiles will be able to penetrate armor and air defense. So if you're going to have a ballista, they want to make these. This is for jump town, really. Uh, things like that. They're going to want to see the gameplay for jump town and make it a little more you can't just go easily buy a ballista. You're going to have to really want one. Um, and then you're going to have to transport it. <laughs> so we'll get into that part where you need a vehicle to transport. And then again, the, the Pisces, the, that was the big thing here is the rescue Pisces. I think it's one of the best ships in the game. I think everybody should have one. I think they're great. And they made it super affordable so everyone can. Because um, these will fit into the Polaris. They will fit into the Galaxy um, they're small medical, so of course it would fit in an endeavor when that hope eventually happens. But, um, yeah, so these new ships that have hangars, even an Odyssey, 
it would fit in. Uh, good luck on that one coming out anytime soon. So uh, the Carrick, this is kind of a dream ship for a lot of people. It is $600 in game. Oh, Pisces is like 65. So they're kind of throwing that money away. Uh, and I actually own one of those because uh, I thought it was such a great ship always to have. And yeah, I just buy it in game. So that's getting upgraded to something else. It's an LTI token for me. Um, the Carrick. This is with jump points and jump point mapping. This is going to be a lot of fun. Now, the thing is, they're raising the price, but you can't use the cargo yet because the cargo is going to be detached or you won't be when the cargo upgrade comes in. And that might be part of why they're delaying it too is it's such a good cargo ship, like 500 SCU of cargo space. And it uh, won't be able to be used in the cargo factory because the, the modularity. So they might be waiting for modularity before the cargo release for the Retaliator and the Carrick to be fully functional and the Raft, um, which is a cargo ship. So again, Centurion ground-based vehicle, I see this for Jump Town. They're trying to make these to be more mindful decisions. Now, the Hornets are Squadron 42 ready. Uh, so bear in mind, these are gold standard things. They're really good ships already polished. They're going to be, they've been around for a long time. The new one is a, a needed rework. And they're calling you to Mark II to kind of, so they could just make a new ship. And it was, it's a fun, it's, I think it's a worthwhile cash grab. Uh, for those who want it, great, buy it. If you don't, buy it in game. Get the rep, then get the upgrade. Um, I think the the Mark II is going to be the small single player version of the Lightning. So basically, it's less fragile in that more of the guns are in the center part where the Lightning, you lose them on the sides and you've got your four size threes. I guess they're going to be equivalent, maybe. The problem with the Lightning is you have size twos on the top and the nose. With the Hornet, you'll have size threes if you have the military version on the nose and the top, which makes it already more powerful than the Lightning if you lose your, um, your wings. And you can still fight pretty well in a, in a Hornet without wings, where in a Lightning, not so much. And you lost so much firepower on the wings of the Lightning, where you lose two size fours. So, um, and two size fours versus some of the other ones that can easily get knocked off on the Lightning. So, but Lightning's a heavy fighter get in front of it it blows you up medium is supposed to dogfight a little more which again even more agility in that regard and it's a... all right end of soapbox <laughs> the lightning needs a power plant upgrade in my opinion to keep it competitive to keep powering those weapons otherwise you have to use the ballistics so anyway good point these are the hornet's going to be a very powerful fighter and therefore there it's going to have armor it's supposed to be able to take beatings that's why it has a lot of that's why it's so much more expensive here especially the super hornet which is a two-person version wildfire again loadout and um <clears throat> yeah so the, the i think the wildfire has got more gonna have more armor and a more powerful some a better loadout but yeah that's why it's more hurricane okay this is six the reason why the hurricane is so much money is yes it's military uh the armor is going to be it's a zoom and boom it's like an it's a speed interdiction interdiction kind get in quick it's got powerful front guns for the pilot two size fours right yeah gimbaled size threes yeah two fixed size fours um but those four size threes on the turrets are now having auto turrets so that just became a really dangerous heavy fighter it was dangerous before. It was one of the scariest ones. So this makes this one of the best um, ships in the game. Uh, I would say it may make it better than the Scorpius. Now, Scorpius, you lose some of the controls. But the question is, are those now auto-gimbaled remote turrets like this man turret, uh, like the hammerhead? We'll see. But this that's why this is, gonna, is so expensive. Now, it's power the valkyrie is really expensive 
because A, it has uh, two man turrets and two or three remote turrets. Um, then you got your, of course, troop transport. It's an it's armored. It's got a lot of hit points. It's got good shields, size two shields, size two quantum drive, and a good power plant. But most importantly, it's a military armor. So your drop ship, go down there, get your people out, and that below turret makes uh, manned below turret with the auto is going to make it a very dangerous. And then the top one, very dangerous. <laughs> Plus you've got your wings that are remotes. And then there's the one that's slaved underneath the pilot uh, that it's also gimbaled, um, but not auto gimbaled, I don't believe. So, um, yeah, it's going to be, that's a really dangerous ship. So it can do lots of things. And uh, if you have a three-person crew for the Valkyrie, imagine having a hurricane with an extra gunner and more hit points. Um, it is going to be like a super heavy fighter that can transport stuff. Cargo, people. So making that 21 million versus, you know, six, you're going to earn it. And, uh, okay, so car to all, alien tax. They're just trying to make alien ships. They're really expensive. It's a 170 fighter, um, very agile, two size four guns, shields and huge cross section but alien tax um you get more for that for real money if you're saber you're gonna have um but you not the agility so the big thing is uh now moving into anything that makes you money again mole but the mole is armored the argos you can like it used to be you dry you could fly through a connie uh, I mean, you could just smash a Connie if someone was a Connie was attacking. You could just fly straight through with a mole if you can survive the guns. But it had the armor and it had the shields, and you could run away. And it was a good anti-pirate mining. So you can make a lot of money with a mole. Three people on the mine on the lasers, and they have a computer correction to make it more stable, so you can crank out more things. That makes a lot of sense. All three lasers are in use. Resistance is lowered four people it's a nice crew um banu banu oh yeah alien tax uh this ship is got so many problems i, I want to go into it. its guns you got to change the whole thing out uh it used to be flies good atmosphere is good fighter i don't know if you like it i have issues with the pilot co-pilot issues they don't work properly so fix that maybe um, not really concerned. I don't know on the armor aspect. I just look at it as the alien tax. Okay, so now consolidated outlined the cowboys, right? So this is just a kind of a standard upgrade. None of these have major armor changes. They're just trying to make it so if you upgrade to a ship, you feel you earned it more or your starter alpha is worth more. And because people aren't flying the alpha that much, they're flying the cutter because it's a better value. And a lot of people like the nomad. Uh, space truck cargo it does have I will say it's got a lot of guns for what it is uh, I think it's four size threes three size threes oh it's got extra shields extra power that's it or a third shield so I think it's got a third shield yeah anyway so it's a little more resilient you can you can dogfight in it if you want to so crusader industries here is the key here this is what a lot of people are what's going on okay the a2 look at this price increase from 5.5 million to 45 million now 750 dollars real money 750 okay that is why this is so expensive <laughs> then you've got your c2 your cargo very very expensive uh you make money with this the c the a2 you can still make money it's got cargo space but it's those four size 10 bombs. I mean, this is a game changer. And I think this, I welcome this because I think too many people have this ship. And if somebody wants to buy with in game money, 45 million, I think you earned it. Go ahead and grief the crap out of people with it. Uh, however, you're going to use it. I know that's actual gameplay, but 
seven or fifty dollars at least where you could get the c2 for 400 so is it was it worth 350 real money us dollars for a 1.1 million dollar auec difference a credit difference <laughs> ion inferno one of my favorite ships both of them i love the aries 5.6 million yeah happily it's got armor and i think it's pretty tanky already so that's going to add more a2 has a lot of armor c2 does not have as much armor and it's a cargo and a2 has bombs so i think they did really well on the crusaders now the m2 is armored c2 i think with an extra shield or power plant one of the two i forget on the specs on that but again 31 million so these are now high demand ships and this is going to be a big deal because when we get to this next part drake and then the msr is your millennium falcon people's dream ship cargo data running which we don't have data running when that happens data running might, might go up in cost and this is also to boost the economy so people have to earn more doing things and if they do find an exploit then they might be able to counter it by the time people for people buy the ships which means less having to do less wipes because everybody gets the ships and they need to test gameplay all right um now the buccaneers got almost no armors paper thin tons of ammo or tons of weapons makes sense that that is not as much there but the caterpillar cargo makes you money a lot of guns it's drake so not as armored but look at this corsair and this is going to come into play when we look at rsi the corsair has a lot of guns so it makes sense that it's expensive but it's they're only doubling it uh from 34 to 7.6 that's not that much in comparison i mean you're looking at a two two million more than a vanguard i think close enough we'll figure that out um it's it's a lot of ship for a little money but it's paper thin armor does duct tape you know put the thing together so when we get to the others it'll be a, you'll see the difference the blue is the bounty hunter when bounty hunting coming soon that's going to be more expensive it's got it's faster it's got better missiles it can interdict quantum it's going to be a big deal when it comes to and it dampens quantum so you can't run away when bounty hunting is the thing in master modes uh steel the cutlass steel still doesn't have armor it just is a group transport so they charge more I still don't think it's a great value in game or real money. Um, yeah, I think it's 230 as the steel. Uh, black is 110 real money. And then the blue is 175 and the red's 135. The cutter still one of the best ships in the game. Great starter. You get a cutter um, package and you'll be very happy. You can do a lot of things. Uh, fight it can travel it can do some good dog fighting it can uh, cargo and now let's jump into the most important one in my opinion we're going to skip asperia gray cat kruger i'm going to skip misc for now because uh if we take a look here not a doesn't make a lot of difference these are just general upgrades to make things more expensive reliant core they're um kind of a decent starter and the dur they're draw uh dur is cheapest in this which is funny because that's the explorer the max is cargo the misses missiles freelancers general as more cargo so the dur you're sacrificing cargo so i guess that's where they're focusing on is cargo makes you money explore t gameplay's not here yet and origin we should mention just because of the new 890 price is 110 million dollars uec and i'm really glad because i want people to earn this ship if someone spent 890 dollars fine or 990 whatever they spent great uh 600i is a 475 dollar upgrade the touring or ship so I think they're almost at that $100 per million. And I think you're really like when they finish the rework, I have a 600 I, I do not fly very much cause I get tired of falling through the darn floor, um, having issues with the cargo, the, the bars and the, the, 
the kitchens don't work, the armories, it needs the rework to happen, which modularity is when it will happen because it's now modular with the touring or was, but they're going to release it with that. And you're going to have those releases when galaxy comes out, I think. But, uh, yeah, I, that's fair. You earn it. You're happy. 890 jump. You earn it. You're happy. You, you feel like you've got some psychology dopamine hit satisfaction here, but here is where I really want to draw some comparisons here. The Andromeda, the Aquila, the Phoenix, they all have the, the Taurus is cargo. So that one should be the cheapest. Um, it only has as a tractor beam instead of a turret. The Phoenix is the luxury version. Uh, might have shielded areas. My uh, guildmate said that you might be you could smuggle with that. I know the Taurus has a shielded area, but this is the luxury. Eventually, they'll get the hot tub working. That'll be fun. It's for high society. And Undine Andromeda, one of the best things, gunship. Uh, and if you buy an Aquila in uh, with real money, three fifteen, you also they throw in the Rover, which like fifty bucks. So it kind of tries to help balance it out. But the Andromeda, all those missiles, ninety six cargo. You can make good money with it. The Aquila is about is roughly the same, but. It's got a better viewport, in my opinion. I would fly an Aquila over uh, Andromeda because I just like the way it look. I can see out of it. Uh, same basic firepower, lack of less missiles in all of these. The same guns. All right. So, that, but look at the price differences. Where the Corsair was seven million, the Andromeda it's supposed to be. I mean, these are used to be head to heads, sixteen, and that these have more armor key thing they have more armor than the drake ships well the corsair <laughs> all right that was the that's like the really big thing i wanted to hammer in is armor is coming and yeah don't really care as much on these things racing's becoming a thing and they want these it's just too cheap sure everyone can own it but now all right half a mil you got to put some thought into it Otherwise, everyone should just buy one in game. And for this, if you really want one, you still just buy one in game. It's just taking the time to go to the terminals. Anyway, this is Dr. David Star Touch. Uh, I just wanted to put my my thoughts on that real quick. So uh, they were there and point out Maelstrom's coming. And there's going to be a lot more reason to play the game and earn it. And you're going to feel that satisfaction of that progression a little bit because the ships are going to mean more. And if then if you spent real money too, they're also balancing that value so that you know when the game is released, this is some expectation management, it's going to be a lot of money uh, in game money. So we haven't even talked about uh, right now the hammerhead is 725 in game 40 million. So I think uh was at the very start here uh yeah the hammerhead yeah 40 million expect these numbers to go up maybe it'll be 400 million uh so when people spend that money for those bigger ships they're gonna get a bigger value and that's where i if you buy your starter ship find the ship that you really love and if you were gonna keep playing the game for long term and you melted that package and got the, like I was saying, the holiday packages or whatever the ones that have 20,000 AUEC on them for the extra boost, and then upgrade it to get the 120 month insurance. You've got your perfect single ship that you know how to fly, that you love, you do all your gameplay with. That's what you upgrade through to get the ship you want. And then you earn down if you want to do that you're going to be able to buy them all in game. And so there's a lot to be said about doing the gameplay with other people and earning the ships. And that's what we really start to get to see in this new patch is that part that we all love. I got a $40 ship. I joined up with the crew and I earned my hammerhead or I earned my 890 jump. That satisfaction is the gameplay part that you get to enjoy and sure, people can buy ships with real money. As someone who has had a bunch of almost, at one point, almost all the ships due to loaners, and 
that uh it takes a lot of the gameplay out so you're just paying for relaxation i guess you're paying for being busy if you're i'm i do not have a lot of time to play the game right now um with my business and i can jump into my ship and i don't have to work as hard uh but if someone's playing and they they earn their their they earned their 890 however they did it i know they put a lot of hours and they have a lot of skill in whatever they do so people who earn their ships are going to be better players and their game loops people who earn their ships are going to have greater satisfaction and you know you're going to respect as someone who's bought ships i respect that a lot um I don't, you know, I, I, I fly my main ships and I'm getting ships mainly for the org. So uh, I buy the big ships and those often have loners. So because they're not all out yet. So just some, kind of something to keep in mind. You don't need to spend any more than your starter package and you will probably get more reward from your starter package over time. You're going to enjoy it intrinsically. All right. Well, that's it. Uh, sorry for the long video, but I'm just going to post this and get it out there. And I wish you a beautiful day. Namaste.